We present the Centauro Disaster Response Robotic System, developed within the European Union's Horizon 2020 program, led by the Autonomous Intelligence System Group of the University of Bonn, Germany. In March 2011, the disaster in Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant evidenced the need for robot deployment in real-world scenarios. Especially, when human lives are in risk. However, this accident also showed the reality gap between the robot capabilities and the real-world requirements. Robots could have played a key role in this disaster response, but they were not ready. Robots acting in these human-made environments, require a wide repertoire of locomotion and manipulation capabilities. For instance, in the industrial plant presented in the picture, robots need to overcome stairs, ramps and to navigate through different terrains. Manipulation skills are required to interact with objects in their surroundings. Operating tools or removing debris in the path are frequently encountered tasks, that need to be solved. In the Centauro project, we developed a disaster response system which consists of the highly flexible Centauro robot and suitable control interfaces. The robot has an anthropomorphic upperbody with two arms with seven degrees of freedom each, and four legs with five degrees of freedom each. All legs ends with steerable wheels providing driving capabilities to the platform. The arms carry a nine degrees of freedom right shunk hand, and a four degrees of freedom left hiri hand. To create an immersive situation awareness for the operators the robot is equipped with multiple sensors including a 3D laser scanner, and multiple color and depth cameras. With fully extended legs, the robot has a similar height as a human. It weights 92 kg including the battery which allows for an operation time of 2 hours. The maximum driving speed reaches 1.6 m per second. The robot is designed to be commanded remotely from a safe place for the operators. The interfaces include an immersive telepresence suit, and support operator controls on different levels of autonomy. The picture on the left displays an operator wearing a head-mounted display for immersive situation awareness, and an upperbody exoskeleton to control the robot. Other teleoperation interfaces include a 6D mouse for limb control, and a joystick for omnidirectional driving as depicted on the right. Complex operator arm, wrist, and hand motions can be intuitively transferred to the robot by the telepresence suit. The 6D end effector poses of the two arms are computed and sent to the Centauro robot as references to compute joint values through inverse kinematics. The hand exoskeleton modules track operator finger motions and provide grasping force feedback. In order to reduce the high cognitive load on the operators, some tasks can be delegated to autonomous modules, for instance, to navigate to a target location or to grasp a tool. We developed a locomotion planner that combines omnidirectional driving and stepping capabilities in a single graph search-based planning problem. Point clouds are processed to height maps to finally generate cost maps. This pipeline is enriched by parallel terrain class computation. With all this information, the robot finds a path to circumvent the gravel. The presented autonomous manipulation pipeline enables by manual functional grasping that allows object usage. From our GBD images, the semantic segmentation module finds the object to manipulate, whose pose is later estimated. The segmented point cloud is registered non-rigidly and control poses such as grasp poses are transferred from a canonical known model to the presented instance. Then, a collision-free motion is generated and verified by the operator before the final execution. The final Centauro system was evaluated in a systematic benchmark at the facilities of our application partner KHG. Tasks were designed based on KHG's knowledge about real-world disaster response missions. All tasks were performed without previous training, and with the operator station located in a separated room, preventing direct visual contact. The robot was operated mostly untethered relying on power supply through its battery and a wireless data link. First, the teleoperated locomotion capabilities were tested in three different tasks. In the step field task, the robot had to traverse a step field built from concrete blocks randomly arranged in a grid and wooden bars.
In the staircase task, the robot had to climb a staircase with three steps. The step height was 20 cm. In the gap task, the robot had to overcome a 50 cm gap. A neutral referee rated the goal achievement of the tasks. Since the system had research demonstrator status and the evaluation was the first time all required components were integrated, three runs were permitted for each task of which only the best run was rated. The table shows the success rate of each task together with the execution time. The robot manipulation capabilities were evaluated in six different tasks. In the fire hose task, the robot had to connect and to disconnect a fire hose to a nozzle. In the 230 volts connector task, the robot had to connect and to disconnect a standard 230 volts plug placed in one hand to a cable power outlet hanging from the ceiling. In another task, the robot had to plug a 230 volt plug, which was closed with a lid, into a power outlet at the wall. One hand was required to open the lid while the other had to insert the plug. In the shackle task, the robot had to fix a shackle to a metal ring at the wall. One hand had to position the shackle around the ring while the other hand had to insert and turn a screw. Here, the robot had to screw a wooden board to a wooden block by using an off-the-shelf electrical screwdriver. The wooden board with pre-mounted screws was held with the hairy hand. Finally, the power drill task demonstrated the operation of a bi-manual tool by making holes at marked places into a wooden block. The table shows the results of the six manipulation tasks. Three tasks combined locomotion and manipulation. In the first one, the robot had to pass a locked door. Then, the robot had to approach an elevated platform, to climb it with its front feet and to open and to close a gate and a lever-type valve. Finally, a pipe star consisting of five short pipes with different orientations was placed on the ground. Each of the pipes had to be grasped at the top. This task is used by KHG to evaluate real-world mobile manipulation platforms. Autonomous control functionalities were evaluated in two tasks. In an autonomous locomotion task, the robot started in front of a patch of debris and some obstacles. A two-step staircase ending in an elevated platform was positioned behind the debris with the goal pose on the platform. In the autonomous manipulation task, the robot had to detect an unknown, by manual power drill on a table in front of it, to grasp it with both hands, to operate the trigger, to lift it, and to put it back on the table. We presented the final state of the Sent Auro system consisting of the flexible Sent Auro robot and a set of operator interfaces including a telepresence suit. We demonstrated the system capabilities to solve challenging, realistic disaster response tasks in a wide range. We further showed that neither pure teleoperation nor pure autonomy are desirable for controlling a complex robot in such challenging tasks. Instead, a set of control interfaces which address different tasks and support the operation on different levels of autonomy provides intuitive control and flexibility. The Sent Auro system constitutes a significant step towards the support of rescue workers in real-world disaster response tasks, eliminating the risks to human health. Thank you for your interest.